Welcome everyone to section number nine. This is triple integrals in spherical coordinates. And I jokingly call this, right, spheres the final frontier, right? So this is the last section that we're doing here in chapter 15. All right, so in this section, or in this video really, uh, I wanna think about, right, uh, what should uh, the variables for spherical coordinates be? And then how can we transform from Cartesian to cylindrical and to spherical coordinates and back and all that sort of stuff, right? And then, we have to ask ourselves, right, when we had cylindrical or polar, right, we had this extra thing, this R, right? And the question is, well, what is that new integration factor that we should have for spherical? It's not R in this case, it's something a little bit more complicated. So we wanna figure out what should that be? Uh, and that's what we're gonna do here in this video. All right, so uh, <laughs> when I think about spherical coordinates, I like to think I'm pro programming a remote turret. Or really, even back in the olden days, you know, imagining that I have some like cannon or something that I'm protecting a castle sort of deal, and that you have some turret up, turret up here, right? And maybe it has shields on it. Probably spend too much time drawing this thing. And here I am, and I'm trying to fire this turret to again. I'm maybe protecting the castle or something like this from invaders. And you have to, uh, right, if you're thinking about, you know, uh, turrets and whatnot, you may want to be interested in, right, how hard should you fire the projectile, right? How far away is uh, the enemy or the thing that you're trying to hit? Uh, and then where should you aim, right? Left and right sort of deal. So how far should I turn? And then also where should I aim up and down, right? You know, how far should I have uh, maybe this uh, little, again, cannon or something like this pointed up or pointed straight, right? Where should we aim this in the vertical direction? And that actually perfectly corresponds uh, to spherical coordinates. So when I ask, right, how hard should you fire the projectile? This is actually, and we're gonna use the Greek letter rho, right? So this is the magnitude of u vector, I guess, <laughs> your vector, right? So yeah, the magnitude of your vector, this is really telling you how hard should you fire a projectile? That is our rho value. And then uh, where should we aim, left and right? Well, this is actually gonna be the theta value. It's the same one from our polar or cylindrical coordinate system, right? That kind of told us how far we should we aim left or right. And then finally, we should ask, well, how much up and down should we aim? And that's gonna be phi or phi. And just how uh, when we have theta, right, this kind of at zero, you're in the positive x-axis direction and we kind of rotate around counterclockwise. Uh, so at pi over two, right, you're at the positive y direction, so on and so forth. We have to say, well, same thing, well, where is zero for phi or for phi? So zero is gonna be straight up in the air and then pi is gonna be straight down towards the ground, right? And so actually the range for phi is gonna be from zero to pi. We won't need to go all the way around. So, okay, let's look at the picture here because this will really help. So here we go. Again, in order to get any point in space, imagine this is a P right here. You need to say, well, what is the magnitude of the vector? How far do you go from the origin? And that's our rho value. How far should I turn left and right? That's gonna be our theta value, right? So same sort of deal if you were to think about this P projected into the XY plane, that would tell you how far left and right you need to turn. And then how far should we look up and down? Well, that is our phi value or phi. I'm gonna to try to be better about this. Uh, I usually pronounce it with phi. So I'm just gonna go with phi in class. Uh, that's my pronunciation of this. All right, so this is the spherical coordinate system. Let's learn a little bit on how to transform you know, back and forth between spherical and Cartesian. So I wanna write down some equations that will help us with this. Um, and the claim is, right, please don't actually memorize any of these things. Uh, we can actually come up with them in a nice picture here. But okay, here they are. The first thing is, so I call this Cartesian plus. So the, the kind of the plus here is that I'm adding the R. So R is gonna be rho sine phi. Sorry, rho sine phi. The next up, right, x. Well, we know x is R cosine theta. And if R is rho sine phi, well, let's go ahead and just replace that, right? So we're gonna have rho sine phi cosine theta. And likewise, right, y is R, oops, not cosine, R sine theta. There we go, sine theta. So let's go ahead and replace the R and we have rho sine phi sine theta. And finally our Z would be rho cosine phi. 
And then if you have x squared plus y squared plus z squared, well, that's going to be r squared, right? x squared plus y squared is going to be r squared plus z squared. And if you go ahead and if you substitute these things in, right, r squared uh, plus z squared, right, you're actually going to get rho squared. And so already we can see that we can actually derive this one, this one, and this one from the other two. It's really just the r and the z that we need to get a picture for. Oops, sorry, things are going crazy. All right, and so the picture that I like to use, right, is actually based on this one back here. And it's just basically if I looked at it at a nice angle, right? So if I looked at it at a nice angle, you could imagine really that we have more like an r axis and a z axis. Remember, r is really only positive, so this is really making sort of a half plane sort of deal, right? So you have this r, right? So here's the r right here. Imagine the r axis, and then we have the z axis. And if you have a point out here, maybe some p sort of deal, right again so this length right here is going to be rho and then this angle right here right it starts at the uh, positive z axis right that's going to be our phi value so well let's go ahead and see maybe i'm going to complete the triangle here so i have a nice right triangle and we can get some equations right so here's our angle phi again and maybe i want uh, sine phi, well that's going to be, hy uh, sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. Well this opposite right here is how far I go out in the r direction, right? So that's going to be the r value. So opposite over hypotenuse, well our hypotenuse is rho. So if I solve for this, I get r is equal to rho sine phi. Okay, likewise, right, this one right here, this length is the z. Right? This is how far up you go in the z direction. So if I use our cosine formula, right, cosine of phi is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is going to be z. Hypotenuse is still rho. Go ahead and solve for z here, and we get z is equal to rho cosine phi. So you can get the equations for both r and for z by kind of drawing out a picture in kind of this r, z, half plane thing, right? So r is kind of the independent variable, takes on like the x, and then z, right, that's more of the dependent variable in the picture here, right? They're both actually independent when we come to the integration. So again, it's just kind of looking at this picture from the right angle, right? So it's basically if we were had the great a good viewpoint, we could get so that R is perfectly out to the right, and then Z is still straight up and down. All right, so that's how you can get the uh, equations for both R and for Z, and now the rest can be derived. And so again, you really don't need to memorize these things. All right, so let's actually use these and convert, right? So convert the following Cartesian points into spherical coordinates. So for the first one here, well, let me go ahead and maybe the easiest one that I like to compute out uh, is rho, right? So x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared. Well, that's going to be equal to 2, and that's rho squared. So in this case, this implies that rho is going to be equal to root 2. Again, rho typically takes on positive values. You don't really uh, usually talk about negative values for rho whenever possible. Same rule as for r. So yeah, let's figure out uh, the phi value next. So I'm going to go ahead and use the z coordinate. I like that. So z, which we have as 0, that's supposed to be rho, which we now know is root 2, cosine phi. All right, well, I can divide by root 2 on both sides, and we get 0 is equal to cosine of phi. So I want to know when is cosine equal to 0. Well, that implies that phi has to be pi over 2. Remember, phi ranges between 0 and pi, right? And so the only place where cosine is equal to 0 between 0 and pi is pi over 2. And now, and finally, in order to solve for the theta value, well, I actually like to bring up this whole y over x, right? y over x is equal to tangent of theta. That's still probably my favorite one for solving uh, for theta. So in this case, y over x, that's going to be 1 over 1, is equal to tangent of theta. So where is tangent of theta equal to 1? 
Well, this implies that theta should be equal to pi over 4. And now let's actually try to visualize this one and verify, right? So if I choose this rho, this phi, this theta, that we actually get to the point 1, 1, 0. So I'm going to just draw a little picture up here. So here's x, y, and z. And OK, so I have the point 1, 1. It's going to be kind of annoying to draw, but okay, one one zero there. Okay, so there is our point. So the idea here, right, again with our spherical coordinates, right, is that first of all that it is root two away from the origin. So if I go ahead and take the origin and draw a line right here, is that root two? Yes, because right, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and we can show that that is actually root two. In fact, this is pretty much the Pythagorean theorem right here, especially because this one zero. Okay. How about our phi value, right? So is pi over 2. So imagine if I'm looking straight up at the z-axis and I kind of rotate down pi over 2, right? So here I'm up at 0 and I rotate down pi over 2 and then I would continue all the way down to pi would be down here. But in this case, I'm stopping at pi over 2. So notice that, yeah, you'd be looking in the xy plane uh, if you rotate down and you're looking at pi over 2. Okay. So then finally, right, we need to kind of rotate out, uh, turn uh, with our theta value. Our theta value is pi over 4. So let me actually, I need to zoom in here. So remember, theta starts at the positive x-axis, and it rotates around. And in this case, yeah, this really does look like pi over 4, right? Because then pi over 2 would be over here in the y direction. So yes, this seems to work out if you were to write, program your turret right, uh, to go out, root 2. And then uh, look down, pi over 2, and then look left and right, you know, pi over 4, you would get to this point. All right, great. So there is the visualization. Let's try to do one more of these things here. So B, again, I'd like to go ahead and convert this into spherical coordinates. So let's go ahead. Uh, and again, I'd like to calculate out rho first. So 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. That's going to equal rho squared. So that's going to be 9 plus 16 plus 25. That's going to be equal to 50. So OK, that means that uh, rho is going to be equal to root 50. And that's going to be the same thing as 5 root 2 if we go ahead and simplify that. Next up, maybe I want to go ahead and calculate out phi. So in this case, let me I'm going to go ahead and use my z uh, again. So z is 5, and that's supposed to be equal to rho cosine phi. So again, I already know my rho value. It's 5 root 2 cosine of phi, right? OK, so if I divide by 5 root 2 on both sides, I'm going to get 1 over root 2 is equal to cosine of phi. If I wanted to go ahead and rationalize the denominator here, I would get root 2 over 2. And that actually looks like a unit circle value, right? I can probably solve this. So, OK, where is cosine equal to root 2 over 2? Well, this implies probably that phi is equal to pi over 4, right? That would give you a cosine value of root 2 over 2. And again, remembering that phi ranges between 0 and pi, there are actually no other values where cosine is equal to phi in that range. So this is the unique correct answer. And then finally, if we wanted to go ahead and figure out theta, well, again, I'd like to use this y over x is equal to tangent of theta. So in this case, y is 4 over x is 3. That's equal to tangent of theta. Well, do we know any places where tangent of theta is equal to 4 thirds? No, we do not, right? This is not one of those points on the unit circle. So the best we can do is just say that theta is equal to tangent inverse of 4 thirds, right? And we just apply a tangent inverse to both sides, and that's as good as we can do. So again, we were able to find our phi value, our theta value, and our rho value. Excellent. And let me go ahead and highlight this, I guess, for the other one over here, just so we can quickly identify our answers. OK, so the last thing that I want to do in this video is right. I want to figure out what is this integration factor, right? So before when we had cylindrical or polar, we knew that this thing that we had to add was r, right? Which resulted, uh, you remember back in the videos for polar back in section four, right? from uh, wiggling your independent variables a little bit, those r's and those thetas, you saw that the resulting area was this r 
times dr d theta. So the question is, well, what should it be uh, here in spherical coordinates, right? So we want to know what kind of integration factor, what should this be here in this case? And okay, so I have this nice photo here, which again, kind of you can see if you wiggle things, uh, you know, change your thetas a little bit. So you have a delta theta. Oops, let me go ahead because I need this one right here. So we have a delta theta and we have, let's see, a delta phi. Oh, sorry, not phi, I want to say phi, right? And you have a delta rho, right? So kind of you're wiggling this back and forth, right? So you make this kind of three-dimensional volume thing that's not quite rectangular. And you want to know what is the volume of this structure, right? So again, this comes from wiggling our independent variables, this rho and this phi and this theta, right? And the resulting shape has a volume. The I'm just going to give it to you, right? I don't want to calculate this out. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's makes your eyes bleed a little bit, right? And so, yes, the, the resulting shape has a volume of rho r, delta rho, delta phi, delta theta. So it's not just r, but it's a rho and an r, right? And so therefore, the resulting triple integral, right? What is that integration factor? Well, it's going to be the triple integral over d of f of rho phi theta, and then this is going to be rho r d rho d phi d theta. So this is how I remember it, is just that we have, you know, the rho, sorry, we have the r from cylindrical, and then we get the rho from spherical. But r, right, r is not really a legal spherical variable, right? We shouldn't have any r's. So therefore, if we go ahead and substitute in, right, we get that this is the triple integral over this region D of F of rho phi theta, and we have rho's fine, but then R, right, is rho sine phi. So this is gonna be rho squared altogether sine phi. So that is our integration factor right there, D rho, D phi, D theta. Right, so that is our new integration factor for spherical. So whenever you switch into spherical coordinates, you're going to need this rho squared sine phi. Okay, and I have a little bit of bonus math for you to some extent. Uh, the claim is matrices are kind of behind all of these things. So if you wanted to change into a different coordinate system, the way that you actually find these things out uh, are, co are called Jacobians, right? And so the claim is, right, if you wanted cylindrical coordinates, right, where x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta, z is equal to z, well, if you take partial derivatives with respect to all of these things, right, so the partial derivative of x with respect to r, right, so that's just going to be cosine of theta. If you take this partial derivative of x with respect to theta, so that's going to be r sine theta, well, sorry, the derivative of cosine is negative sine theta. If you take the derivative of x with respect to z, well, that's going to be zero, right? And so if you take the determinant of this matrix, right, calculating out all of these partial derivatives, well, this is going to give you, amazingly, r, right? So I do these calculations for us because, yeah, they do take a little bit of time here. Likewise, in spherical coordinates, right, we know x is uh, rho sine phi cosine theta, y is rho sine phi sine theta, and z is rho cosine phi, right? So if you were to take all these partial derivatives, so the partial derivative of x with respect to rho, with respect to cosine, with respect to phi, right? This one's really long, right? But the claim is when you calculate out this determinant, right? When you go kind of line by line sort of deal, this is what you get, like I said, very sad. Simplify down, simplify down, simplify down, and when you actually, right, you take the absolute value of this, you do get rho sine phi. Sorry, rho squared sine phi. So that is the integration factor there. So we got the r up here. We get the rho squared sine phi. So this, these Jacobians, these determinants of these complicated matrices with all these partial derivatives, these actually give us these integration factors, these things that we need to throw in when we switch from uh, Cartesian into a different coordinate system. And the claim is, actually, you can even expand this, interestingly enough, to uh, more fun things. Uh, we haven't really gone over surface area yet, but the claim is if you're a little bit clever, right, you can actually get uh, the surface area factor, right? So if x is x, y is y, and z is the surface uh, x, y, so f of x, y here, and you take partial derivatives, and in this case you need an i, j, k sort of deal, and in this case, 
um, you do get this actually this will come up this was it's actually in 156 uh, but we kind of group this together in chapter 16 we'll do both of the surface area things together sort of deal so this will come up again the claim is this will help us calculate out surface area and so yes the claim is is that determinants of matrices are actually everywhere <laughs> And so while we were arguing kind of from a geometric standpoint of what should these integration factors be when we wiggle our variables a little bit, uh, right? So you could actually cal the, calculate these out more, I guess, algebraically using the determinants of matrices. And this also helps us kind of expand to different types of coordinate systems, or maybe, maybe you don't want to do triple integrals. Maybe you want to do right, something with, you know, uh, four integrals, like, right? Uh, quadruple integral or something like this, right? And determinants of matrices would help you do this. All right, so that's it for this video. I'll see you guys next time.